that's what you need to do. There's nothing inherently impossible with open source. You can maybe accomplish all of that. So, but, I mean, is there a problem where you have different brands all using the same base, but they all have different versions of the same software? Um, you know, so let me talk about how we plan to do this for Chrome OS. Uh, today, today, if you use Chrome, everyone is on the same version. We completely auto update Chrome. We maintain it for users. So I think there are a few ways by which you can solve this problem. And, uh, you know, I don't, this problem of releases and fragmentation, etc. I think, you know, I think, I think it's an important problem. I think it's very solvable for open source projects. Uh, I don't see this as a fundamental issue. How do you can solve it? Uh, you will see it played out in the marketplace, and you know, I don't think you. I, I don't think this will be an issue. Uh, so the premise of the question, I don't accept. So. Can you explain uh, Chrome Web Store's position in Chrome OS project and uh, the whole ecosystem? Chrome uh, Web Store. Chrome Web Store's position in Chrome OS project and the whole ecosystem. Sure. So uh, Chrome Web Store is something I'm very personally very excited by. Uh, it's bringing the notion of how do you let users discover web applications, and how do you let developers reach users uh, with their applications, web applications, and more importantly, also how they can charge for applications other than advertising, which is the primary form available to web developers today. So it's something which we are very excited by. It will launch in the fall of this year. And it'll work on Chrome on Windows, Chrome on Mac, Chrome on Linux, and Chrome on Chrome OS. So, and you know, we expect us to reach millions of users on day one when it launches. Uh, you know, we have already announced Chrome has over 70 million users. So, Chrome Web Store is going to be the heart of how you use applications, both in Chrome, especially in Chrome OS. It is the primary interface through which you will discover applications and you will use applications. So, it's at the heart of the Chrome OS. Before you get started, um, Sundar, can I ask you to hold your mic closer? Oh, sorry. And so the back can listen. I thought I had a loud voice. <laughs> I'm Dan Neistat from IDG. I uh, wanted to ask about security. Um, at some of the, the recent hacker conventions, they've talked a lot about security on the cloud, or a lack of security on the cloud. And of course, Google had the experience in China with Gmail being hacked, and, uh, and then subsequently deciding to change its business strategy there. What will the Chrome OS do in terms of security for people so that, I mean, you know, everybody stores a lot of things on their devices and they don't want it to disappear into the cloud and then never be found again? So, uh, I mean, security is something at the heart of what we do. You know, when, when we release Chrome, we talk about it. Uh, the three principles were speed, simplicity, and security. And for Chrome OS, uh, the principles are the same. Uh, the same three principles, speed, simplicity, and security. Specifically, first of all, why I think Chrome OS is going to be very, very secure. Uh, because we're building, the way you make things secure is having multiple levels of protection. There is no silver bullet for security. And you have to design and architect a system to be secure from the ground up. And we have the fortune of doing so because we're starting from scratch. When we did Chrome, we, we, we knew Chrome was its browser built for web applications. So we built it to be sandboxed. So uh, you know, we had acquired a company then called Green Border, uh, which was the heart of the sandboxing technology in Chrome. Chrome is very secure. Uh, you know, there have been security conferences in the US where you know, people try to hack browsers. And you know, Chrome has proven to be very difficult to hack into. Uh, there are research academic papers from, you know, uh, which have been published on the security model of Chrome. So Chrome inherently is very secure. And, and in fact, we have made some recent announcements on uh, integration of plugins into Chrome and running them within the sandbox as well. Now with Chrome OS, we are already taking Chrome to be very secure. And then we are adding many layers of security. First is verify boot. We understand the underlying hardware and boot from that, right, number one. The second thing is, if you think about it, I think this is an important point. In most operating systems today, users install an application. And so my mom and dad will get, a, will get a dialogue which says, do you want to install this application? Do you trust this? And they have to make the decision. And they say yes. Once they say yes, that application has full access to everything on your system. So if there is any exploit in any one of the applications, your entire system is compromised. In Chrome OS, 
the users don't install code on the system. The web completely assumes everything is a URL, and it's, it doesn't trust anything inherently. So the Chrome OS is based on the web security model. So everything in Chrome OS, every application runs within a sandboxed world. And users aren't making these decisions as to whether an application can be trusted or not. So that is another additional layer of protection. The third thing is to uh, answer his question. We completely auto-update the system. We maintain the system for you. Users shouldn't have to deal with updates in software. We completely maintain it for you. So we'll be very good about keeping you on the latest version. And since Chrome is effectively the only major application running, rest are all web applications, at any given time, we know the processes which are running on the system. Right? And if there is a process which we don't understand, we can shut it down. Right? So I can go on and on, and sorry to bore you with all the details. It's something we are very passionate about. Security is something we are designing from the ground up. But specifically on, on, on user data, um, you know, it's not always easy to access the internet. And from what I understand, I might be wrong about what I read in Chrome OS, that everything is to be done and stored on the internet and not on your device. But, uh, but if I want my music or my photos or my videos, it, is it, it, there's going to be storage oh. on the device and then the yeah. software determines something to process so it doesn't allow it, but if it's a piece of data, like a, a document or something, it will allow a download, is that? No, no. so there is storage on the device. Uh, so there is, you know, we have, we will have a solid state drive on the device. Right. So applications can cache data locally and use it. Um, the model is web application centric doesn't mean you can, like, there are, like, for example, we expect quite a few games to work offline, mm -hmm. even if you don't have connectivity. Or your music app could cache music songs locally, same with your video app, etc. So you can store data locally, and all data on Chrome OS stored is encrypted locally. So it's going to be very secure. Okay. Do we have any questions in the back, or? Hi. Um, for Google TV, I'm right here, right here, <laughs> right in front of you. Uh, for Google TV, you announced a partnership with Intel. Um, what, will you do a partnership of some sort with Chrome OS with Intel or ARM, or how is that going to work? Um, so for Chrome OS, as we said in the announcement, we'll be working on Chrome OS with both uh, x86 and ARM uh, uh, chipsets. And so we definitely, uh, you know, uh, Intel is a market leader uh, in, in computing. We absolutely expect to be working with them. So. Uh, we know Google is developing the software for the, the smart grid, that the software to, to manage the, the smart meter. Is that, uh, is that uh, something related to the cloud, or uh, will the raw data will be put on the cloud too? And the second question is, uh, how Google is going to run the business about this, this software? Uh, you're asking, how is Google going to run the business on, on, around our power meter project? Yeah. So, first of all, uh, you know, I'm not closely involved with the power meter project. Uh, so I don't know the details there. What I can answer is, it's not based on Chrome. If so, I would know more about it. Sure. <laughs> I think there's a question up here. Yes, Francis from uh, Google Views Magazine. Uh, Google seems to go for a thin client and heavy cloud. Uh, business model, and there's some there's something inconvenient for the consumers. That is when they can, can get online, they all they have is a poor device in hand, and there's also something not healthy uh, for the Taiwan audience uh, companies here because they cannot rent more devices, more expensive devices. Would you comment on these two things? I understood the second question. What was the first question again? Sorry. Uh, what you? Uh, what if uh, consumers cannot get on? Uh, all they have is a poor device in hand, and they cannot get all the service they want. So, um, I, first of all, users are using cloud services. So, for example, Facebook has 500 million users, or whatever the number they say they have. You need to be connected to use it. People are using it every day. So I don't think it matters what the device is, what computing model you have. 
today. And today's 